Hey guys, welcome to Yesterday's Coffee, the podcast where we chat about fitness, nutrition, and business all over coffee that may or may not have been brewed yesterday. Today we are continuing what we started last week with our questions out of the infamous shell bowl. Part two. Part two. So we are just going to jump right back in where we left off. Should I go first? Yeah, you go first. I'll go first. All right. (laughs) Uh, Should I not eat past X p.m.? So should you not eat late? So should you not eat late? Yeah. Yeah. Um, For fat loss, there really is no reason to worry about time, time of day. Mm -hmm. I would say the only time that it's, it's... an issue is potentially if you're having issues sleeping um, or for overall health, if you're trying to match yourself up with a better circadian rhythm, then sometimes there's benefit to stopping yourself at a certain time and giving your body a chance to kind of wind down before going to bed. However, when it just comes to fat loss and weight control, there's absolutely no reason. I would rather you get a meal than skip a meal because it's, quote, too late. Absolutely. And honestly, I would say the same thing for health. So it's like, okay, If you're getting all the things that you need in a day, then, you know, maybe you could worry about the time that you're fitting them in. Mm -hmm. But if it's the difference between, you know, missing four to 500 calories or valuable vitamins and minerals and, you know, hitting your goals for the day, I'd rather you hit them at a later time. So if dinner for you happens to be at 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. or 10 p.m., I would rather you just eat then. Yeah. The hierarchy for nutrient timing when it comes to fat loss is way down the totem pole. It's not something to worry about until you've got your calories sorted out, your macros sorted out, your food sorted out. Um, At that point, if you're really trying to maximize every last percentage, then sure, there's definitely some reasons for why you would time things certain ways. But from just a basic, like you said, weight loss, health perspective, the times of day that you eat are for 99% of people, largely irrelevant. Yeah. Yeah. Do I need to avoid bread? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think if you don't have a gluten intolerance um, or a gluten sensitivity or you don't have any other major health conditions that kind of have a crossover with gluten sensitivity, mm-hmm. like thyroid disease or like obviously celiac disease, things like that then there's no reason that you need to give it up or need to avoid it. Um, We've also talked about how you don't need to avoid carbs. So this just kind of goes along into that. If you're specifically worried about gluten, um, you know, there is some science that says that it can um, put a bigger strain on digestion in every person. Mm -hmm. But most people are well equipped to handle that. And if you're focusing more on whole foods and you just happen to like bread here and there, you like to enjoy bread as part of your normal healthy diet, I don't think there's a problem with it. Right. Yeah. If you can digest it, you don't have any sort of issues with the actual processing of bread, then it's not really going to be any different than if you were to have rice. Like it, yeah. It really doesn't make that much difference. It's a carb source. It's still, you still got to hit the macros. You still got to lay out your day properly. Um, obviously if you have issues with gluten or anything else, it'd be a good idea to avoid. Well, you would want to avoid it. But just from a standpoint of eating bread to lose weight or whatever, it's not going to make any difference. It's not like this, you know, terrible food for you. I will say though that when it comes to more processed grain products, like obviously packaged bread has a, an an ingredient list and rice does not. So when it comes to food quality, you do want to look at the quality of the bread and the quality of grain products that you're choosing. Um, So for that reason, you know, it's worth looking at the ingredient list. Yeah. Um, Rice would probably be more filling too for the same amount of carbs. Well, again, it just kind of depends. It depends on the fiber, depends on the protein, whatever. But um, ingredient list does matter. And I do believe in high quality, just food in general. Absolutely. But you can make bread work if you like bread. You're up. Okay. Should you do fasted cardio in the morning? I think we've touched on this before. Sure. Um, yeah, if you like fasted cardio, do it. If you like it, do it. Uh, don't feel like you need to. Uh, science doesn't really support that it has a greater effect. It's just net overall calories burned. Right. So if that helps you get more calories burned for the day, go for it. Um, yeah, I mean, the idea is that if you are doing fasted cardio and your carbohydrate stores are depleted, 
then you'll be forced to tap into body fat stores. That hasn't really been substantiated in any real way. Um, it's It makes sense just kind sure, of intuitively. It makes sense. But um, if you're to keep all variables controlled and the only difference was that you slotted your cardio session before your first meal or after it, you'd probably see no difference at all. Yeah. It's Maybe. very negligible, yeah. so the difference. It, it would be so hard to tell um, because, again, timing is going to be a very low point on the totem pole. It, now, if it's something where that's how you like to get your day started sure. and you want to jump out of bed, get your workout in or get your cardio in and then have your first meal, by all means, do it. But don't feel like, all right, I'm trying to lose this weight. I guess I got to do fasted cardio now because yeah. you don't. No. You don't have to do And it. I would also say that for people who tend to run high on the stress spectrum, fasted cardio is probably not a great idea for you. So if you're somebody who's running around like a crazy person in the morning and like you're just really trying to fit in this fasted cardio, that also might be a situation yeah. you want to want to skip it because your cortisol is going to be so high that you're not going to really see the fat burn benefits from that cardio session. So if you're doing cardio in the morning and you're just a high stress person in general, you probably want to have a little something on your way to buffer that cortisol. Yeah. You can fit your workout into your day. You don't have to build your day around the workout. Yeah. Well, it's also just like if you're stacking cortisol on cortisol, like it's just not doing you any favors. Right. Is breakfast important? Is breakfast important? We're getting a lot of timing questions today. Yeah. No, it's not. Um, so again, this is the same answer with the timing overall. So whether you're choosing to have your calories spread out evenly through the day or you're backloading them because you're doing some sort of intermittent fast or you're front loading them and then you're stopping eating at 6 p.m. If you're controlling your calories and you're controlling your macros, it's not going to make any real difference. You can argue on like a rate of protein synthesis that there's mm. going to be a down regulation in that extended fast and that's if you're getting into the real nitty gritty mm -hmm. but from like just a pure fat loss standpoint uh, it's not going to make much difference on the muscle building side maybe um, but for most people just looking to get in better shape not a problem not a huge deal i i think that a 12-hour overnight fast minimum is good for everybody i think mm -hmm. everybody can benefit from that just from like the restoration that happens overnight during that fasting period. So if you're just like trying to eat breakfast because you think that's what you're supposed to do and it's coming before that 12 hour window, I would honestly say to push it off. Like that would be my best recommendation. I do believe that your first meal of the day, whenever that happens to be, is the most important, but that's just because it kind of psychologically sets the tone for your day more so than has any real like yeah, from a psychological nutrient standpoint, or sure. health benefits. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, I just think, you know, it gets you off on the right track. Mm -hmm. And if you're one of those people that has to play catch up at the end of the night to try and figure out how to fit the rest of your goals you didn't because plan you didn't it out, right? plan it out for breakfast, <laughs> I think that's where else like the first meal of the day is really important to plan ahead for yeah. just to make sure that you're not like that person who's trying to like, scarf down egg whites and peanut butter at night because you're missing your macros. Mm -hmm. So I do think it's the most important meal to have. Well, I do think your first meal is the most important, but I don't necessarily think that like eating breakfast, eating a meal first thing in the morning is always beneficial. Right. Intermittent fasting is fine. Yeah, absolutely. What time of day should I work out? I don't think it matters. Yeah. Again, we're, we're getting a lot of really similar questions. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it you can fit your workout into any point in your day. Now, if if you're trying to work out late at night and it's giving you issues sleeping because you are taking pre-workout at 7 p.m., that's probably <laughs> well, not a good idea. You should never take pre-workout at 7 right. p.m. I, yeah, I that's hear, a bad idea. I hear a lot of stuff. Um, the cortisol could also just keep you awake at night too. Exactly. But like you pair cortisol with a bunch of caffeine in the evening, you're not going to sleep. And if you do, you're not sleeping well. Right. So if, if you're doing some sort of workout that is impairing your ability to recover, namely sleeping, mm -hmm. then that's a problem. If you're not, then train whenever you want. Definitely. There's really no like what strength or metabolic advantage for any period of the day. Well, actually, that's is not 100 percent true. I believe there is actually a strength advantage. So so maybe I should Good to wind know. back. Yeah. A bit. Good to know. There actually is a bit of a strength advantage in the I believe it's the early evening. 
Really? And it's based on circadian rhythm. If oh, I'm, if I'm remembering and hormones. That yeah, actually, um, that makes sense. So yeah, in like the four to six p.m. range, you know, when the gym's pretty packed. Um, but if you don't set up your nutrition the right way, that's also when you probably feel the most sluggish and tired after work. Sure. So this is kind of key with lining up your nutrition, your training, and your overall just daily schedule mm-hmm. and life. Right. They so all come together. We're, we're talking about like the tiniest of yeah, percentages in a, in here. In a perfect world, yeah. <laughs> that might be the best time it's for you to work out. absolutely nothing to stress over. But again, if it's the difference between you working out and not working out because of a certain time of day... Obviously, that's yeah. silly or if to you worry about. Or something else, like don't don't. Worry yeah, about it. yeah. You're not hurting yourself if you work out first thing in the morning. Whatever. Do I really need to eat this much? Uh, probably is my answer. I get this question a lot, um, frequently from women who have been under eating for a majority of their life, and. And they have weight loss goals. And they have weight loss goals. And it's like, okay, we know that starvation mode exists, right? We know that under eating and under recovering can impede your progress. Um, It basically switches your entire body over from being an efficient fat burner to being an efficient fat storer by under eating and over training. Um, And then there's also the difference between like, it might not come down to the calories. You might be used to, you might be. Did I say that right? You might be used to taking in that same those same amount of calories, but with the food difference between highly processed, a highly processed diet and a whole food nutrient dense diet, I might be asking you to eat twice the volume, right. but you're actually eating the same amount of calories. It's easy to get your calories in pizza and french fries. Absolutely. You can hit plenty of calories like drinking beer, eating pizza, like that's easy. But when I ask you to fill those calories with nutrient-dense vegetables and fruits and lean proteins and, you know, healthy grains, it gets a lot harder. Right. But your body does adjust to that because your body does want those nutrients and want those calories. And especially if you're pairing that with a good training routine, yes, it might take you a week to adjust, but your body is going to adjust. Um, And that's kind of a non-negotiable. Your body has a baseline level of calories that it needs to function and and keep you alive. Mm -hmm. And that's not something that I can rightfully negotiate with you on. I can't just say like, well, your body's asking for this many calories, but since you only want to eat this many calories, like, I guess that's fine. That's not really how it works. Yeah. I I always try to get my clients to lose weight when 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 they're trying to lose weight to get them to lose weight on as many calories as possible. And Mm -hmm. there's a couple of reasons for that. So we want to keep your metabolism as high as possible for as long as possible. And the main influence on metabolic rate is calorie intake. So the higher we can keep that, the higher your metabolism naturally stays. We Mm -hmm. know that we're going to have to taper that down over time. And with that tapering down in calories comes a slowing metabolic effect. So the further we can push that off, the better. It's like we're building you this metabolic platform. If you start on the ground, you have nowhere to cut down from. Right. So we are building those calories up. We put you at a higher pedestal in order for us to take that. We'll take those cuts later on. Right. And so with those calories that we're trying to keep in there, we're also trying to keep the food to be a lot more voluminous, if that's a word. Well, to keep you full. Um, Right. So that you're full and so that we have a much larger cushion to pull from as those calories do start to drop. Because if we're eating a lot of really calorically dense stuff and trying to keep your calories pretty low, you're going to be starving all day long. Yes, you're going to feel empty. Yeah. Very empty. So that's where you can technically get away with eating just about anything to fill your macros, but the food composition is going to make a huge difference in how you feel based on the volume and the way that the food digests. Yes. And then also to put on any substantial amount of muscle or mass, you need to take in way more calories. Mm -hmm. This is another thing I think I get from a lot of girls who like want to grow certain areas of their body. Yeah. You need to eat to do that. Your body cannot (laughs) make muscle tissue out of nothing. Yeah. So if you're not in a caloric surplus, if you're not giving your body extra materials to work with, your body cannot grow anything. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Exactly. It can't make something out of nothing. So keep that in mind. Should I use a fat burner? Short answer, probably not. Probably not. (laughs) Um, So caveat to that is fat burners can work if you're already very lean. But you have to be very, like you already have to have visible abs. If you do not have visible abs, 
or really close to it. Or really close. Yeah, I, so, I would say you right, need to have like them, the, the shadows of the outlines of the abs, maybe. Um, that's where it can help because as you get really lean, every single little bit helps. And so if we're talking about throwing in a fat burner that um, has some additional caffeine and some um, what is it? Capsaicin, like the mm-hmm. red pepper yeah. and some stuff that can keep your metabolic rate up just a little bit higher. So maybe, maybe you get a two or 3% boost that can make that much difference when you're already 9% body fat, 8% body fat. If you've got 50 pounds to lose, <laughs> that is the last thing and you need to be taking. And this is opposite of what people think. People think, yeah. oh, if I have more fat to lose, I should take a fat burner that no, helps me burn more fat. That's not how it need. works. You should focus on all these other huge factors that impact Mm -hmm. your metabolism and your body weight before ever even approaching this. So yes, they do have an effect. A lot of them do have, you know, research behind them. But again, the, the effects are so, so small that you have to be really lean to see any benefit. Yeah. And I've, I've used a few myself at different times in my own training to experiment and the leanest I've ever been when I actually competed in a show, I never touched one. Yeah. So, so you don't need them you to don't be successful need them at, all. at all. But there's certain helpful. instances where it can help stave off some hunger. It can help stoke your metabolism a little bit. But sure. unless you're super lean, you don't need to worry about mm. touching them. Can I just do cardio? I feel like we talk about this in every single episode. We should probably, probably talk about, about it again because I, mean, I don't think everybody um, knows this shit. No. The answer is no. You can't just expect to lose a significant amount of weight and keep it off long term by just doing cardio only. There has to be some sort of stress on the muscles. And that's not just a benefit to your weight. That's also a benefit to your bone health, your overall metabolism, and the way that your body functions just on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. Um and but, your overall shape. Yes. But you're, again, your overall shape. Like when people come to us and say that they want to lose weight, they really just want to lose body fat. No one comes to us and is like, yeah, I'd like to lose a bunch of muscle. Right. I mean, I guess sometimes I have girls ask me that, but like. <laughs> you have girls ask you that? Girls who tell me Some they're naturally really muscular. women. <laughs> again, we talked about that. It's not true. Like it's just not true. But anyway, so, you know, when people come to us and ask <clears> to lose weight, They are specifically talking about fat, right? We're all just trying to burn through fat. Well, if you're burning equal parts fat and muscle or you're burning some fat, but you don't really have anything underneath it, your body will have no shape. You will just be a smaller, soft version of who you were. Right. Like there that will same be, form just yeah, shrinks down. when you come to me and you tell me you want to lose weight, I know what you want to look like. I understand that you want to have some muscle definition and a good body shape. Well, don't say muscle, say tone. Sorry, some good muscle tone. Yeah, you mm. want to be, be toned. I have to say that word though. I honestly <laughs> have to use that word in my coaching because girls just really, they won't. They like. They're so afraid of the word. They're so afraid. But strength training is what gives your body that shape that you want. Mm-hmm. Yep. And and we're not talking about like being jacked. You will not be jacked if you pick up a weight. It's just not going to happen. You don't have, no. for one, especially if we're on a fat loss protocol, you don't have the materials. We just talked about this to build any more muscle than you have. Right. So you can't physically get jacked in a caloric deficit on a fat loss protocol most often. Like there are some genetic freaks out there. I get it, but yeah. or unless you're a super beginner, yeah, you'll put on some muscle, but you you're not. But gonna at be that jacked. point, you want it you're because your body be doesn't huge. have any shape before yeah. that. So no, you cannot just do cardio. You can't just start with cardio and worry about weights later. You will get such better results if you start strong with strength training if you're able. If you're in the place where you're not there yet, that's okay. Like starting with cardio still has a great benefit. But if you're just choosing cardio over weights because you're afraid of the weights or you're being a little lazy, you don't want to learn about them. Yeah, if you're in that, there's no reason for that. If you're in that like 20 to 40 pound weight loss range and you're just doing cardio, you're doing yourself a major disservice. You're making it harder for yourself in the future, actually. Especially if you're just doing steady state because you're actually accelerating the slowdown of your metabolism. Yes. Because you're, um, the amount of calories that you're going to burn doing that same steady state activity without any basis of strength training behind it is actually going, that calorie burn is going to drop over time as mm-hmm. your body gets more efficient with that activity. And so if you're not doing any st- sort of activity that stresses the muscles with excess resistance, 
to require it to keep that muscle tissue, which is the metabolically active tissue that keeps mm -hmm. your metabolism up, then that overall metabolic rate is going to start declining and you're actually going to start burning less calories overall even though your diet's the same even and you're, you're doing, doing the, the same, same exercise. exercise. So I have seen this over time where people do this for a year or two years and eventually they're doing the exact same amount of work, eating the exact same, and now they're gaining weight. Right. Where they lost a bunch of weight doing this same program and then all of a sudden they hit a, a long plateau and then their weight starts to creep up little by little. It's because your body has become so efficient at that exercise you need to mix it up. Yeah. If and strength training is the easiest and best way to do that, you know, and also be building a shape underneath. Right. It's my turn. I think you're up. Okay. How often can I drink alcohol? We did a whole podcast on this. If you've got major um, body composition goals, it should, you should just get rid of it, quite frankly. It depends on how serious you are. It does depend on how serious um, or what your timeline looks like. If yeah. you have a time bound goal, I don't care if it's a year from now. If you have any sort of time-bound goal, the less the better. Yeah. If your goal is just like to do this slowly over time, then yes, you can have moments where you enjoy your life and, and you do that. But you have to realize by making that decision, you're effectively putting your progress on pause. Yeah. And you have to own that decision that you've mm -hmm. made. Yeah. It's So it's, it's possible to still progress while including it. But there is absolutely no instance where including it is to your benefit. No. So and it, I would say that, honestly, it's it's more work. And most often, my clients, at least, aren't successful. Right. No, it's, it's <laughs> like, very I'll just be hard. honest. Like, for you to be able to calculate all that stuff out accurately and really build your, your alcohol into your macros, it is possible. But you have to be dedicated enough. And I would argue if you're that dedicated, you're probably not worried about how many beers can I drink. Right. Yeah. And with... With alcohol consumption, if you're going to do it and expect to progress, you better have flawless weeks. Flawless. Like there isn't a single day that you're off point. And yeah, some deviation will happen here or there, but it's not something where you can do Monday through Friday well and then go enjoy your weekend and come back Monday and expect progress. No. If you're including Your weight alcohol. will always go up over the weekend if you're just throwing Saturday and Sunday completely and just drinking and eating whatever you want every single time your weight will be up mm -hmm. every time yeah everything else has to be perfect to a t and then maybe you can fit in one or two drinks in one night yeah and and you go I'll have a few and yeah and you would want to leave it at that so again it's you choose to put your progress on pause or you're willing to do the work and make some sacrifices as to what you're choosing to do. Oh, and here's the thing you need to know. Once you've established where you yes. want to be, maintenance is a totally different story. Maintenance is completely different. We you can, can enjoy yourselves on maintenance. You can be a lot more free with what you're doing, loosen some of the constraints, have some more days out um, when you're just trying to maintain. And that's what a lot of people will see when they're in their fat loss phase and they have a really good week. And then they blow it on the weekend and their weight goes up a pound or it stays the same, even though their week was so good. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, that's kind of what maintenance is like. Because if you're doing really well through the week, you can pretty much do what you want on the weekend to and, and some extent. And keep that same body. Keep, keep that, that same yeah. body. But to get there, it's more work. Yes. Probably got one more in me. Should I cut out red meat? Hmm. No. I don't think so. Beef is one of the most nutrient dense foods on this planet. Yeah. Um, end of story. End of story. Like, it just and and I understand if you don't choose meat as a food in your diet, you know, in general. But if you do consume meat, if you do consume animal products, and you you're trying to stay away from red meat because of all these things that you've heard over the years demonizing it, they're just not. They're true. just not true. They're just not true. Um, High quality is obviously better if you have access to it and you can do it. I would recommend that for everybody. Sure. But um, this is contrary to even what I used to believe. Even lower quality beefs are still nutrient dense and could be the most nutrient dense part of somebody's diet who doesn't have the budget to eat whole foods very often. Right. So this isn't even saying like you've just got to exclusively be doing the grass fed beef. Like you can have any number of different beef. Now, I wouldn't necessarily go the McDonald's route. No. But if, if <laughs> you're picking not. this up from the store and you're cooking it yourself, you're going to have a very nutrient-dense piece of protein right mm -hmm. there. And there is absolutely no reason to 
keep red meat out of your diet. No. Well, so in high quality grass fed red beef or red meat, I guess, um, is high in omega threes, which are anti inflammatory fats, yep. right? So we have high anti or high omega threes. We have a whole s- scale scale scale. I don't know what word I'm looking I don't for. Know what you're trying to say. Oh, range. How about whole that? Range. A whole range of vitamins and minerals, and it's a great protein source. Yeah. So there's really nothing to argue with there. Win win. Win win. Eat your burgers. Don't and be afraid of it. That's the thing. If you do have heart issues. Nine times out of ten, it's – we've talked about this before. It's an inf- inflammation thing. Yeah. So if you're choosing high-quality red meat, you can still enjoy that even if you do have certain cardiovascular or heart conditions. And you should be taking a deeper look at everything else you're eating Absolutely. and making sure that you've got enough plant-based foods, enough vegetables, enough, you know, vitamins and minerals in general and that you're controlling controlling your stress very well. Um, because more often those are the issues and not like – that you eat eggs a few times a week and you eat beef. Like, that's typically not what it is. Exactly. All right, so we're going to do one more. Last one. What is your favorite cheat meal? I don't know that I have a favorite cheat meal because, really, I just love everything. And Yeah, this is really tough. Um, I don't want to pick. And I don't have to pick because I basically give myself cheat meals whenever I want to eat them. Well, what, so what are some examples <laughs> if you don't know what that is? I mean, one? I love pizza. Honestly, pizza is something I crave a lot. Really? Pizza? I really love pizza. I thought you were going to go the pasta route. <gasps> Actually, no. Pasta doesn't do it for me. I'd never go out and order pasta unless I go specifically to Soto to eat pasta. And that's well, the only, that's what I was thinking. That's the only thing. Yeah. No, I would get pizza way more than I would eat pasta. Interesting. Because I'm so picky about the pasta. That's the thing is I will eat pizza from anywhere, but like pasta has to be delicious. Okay. This is like even just a recent thing. I've never, I've never eaten Chick-fil-A in my whole life basically until this year. And for some reason, like I've just been craving Chick-fil-A fried, like spicy chicken sandwiches. Yeah. Yeah, they're good. With Chick-fil-A sauce because it's so good. I think if I had to... But I don't think I would use that as a cheat meal. I don't know. I don't... It's not like I eat it all the time. No, you don't. But, I mean, that's... Rarely. A cheat meal. Sushi. Mm. Sushi. Oh, yeah. Sushi would be on my list. Um, Pizza and sushi, I think. Or something that's fried, because I rarely eat fried food. What I've been doing lately is just Chipotle. Very basic. Very high in carbs. Help with my refeeds. Chipotle doesn't have to be a cheat meal, right? Though. Right, right, right. But so what I'm getting with there, with that is more along the lines of one. Um, but if I'm like a true, true cheat meal, would probably be like chicken tikka masala with a whole pack of Oreos. Yeah, with a whole pack. If we're getting <laughs> I feel into like that's, dessert, I yeah. feel like that's your cheat is always like a whole entire pack of Oreos. Yeah, if I open a pack of Oreos. But like, eat Indian Oreos. food though, I don't even count that as a cheat. Is that bad? <laughs> I just How like, do you not count that as a I cheat? I don't know. I just eat it it's when I want to eat it. butter chicken. I know. <laughs> it, but that's the thing. So I don't I don't know. I guess I like, it, this is such a hard question for me because I don't necessarily like believe in this whole like cheat meal idea. Like I don't, I try to build things that I'm craving into my meals for the week in a healthy way. And then like, if I splurge on something, it's different every week. Right. So your cheat meal is different all the time. Yeah, but I could make. You just call but it I could. Else. Well, no, but here's the thing, though. Like, I can make curry fit into my meal plan. Maybe not like real curry from an Indian <laughs> restaurant, but I can make that same flavor at home. Sure. So, so that's like what I'm like. I don't know. I guess that's just a struggle for me. Like, any quote cheat meal is usually just like a special occasion or like going out with my friends because I'm a social eater. I'll leave it with this. <laughs> After my bodybuilding show, I went out and I had a <laughs> mushroom and Swiss burger and fries um, from Smash Burger. So it's like a half pound burger. Mm. And then that I went to good. Krispy Kreme donuts oh. and I had 14 donuts. That's so many donuts. <laughs> One sitting post burger. Maybe donuts are cheap for me. Because I yeah, can't fit those into my meal plan every well, week. Donuts are definitely cheap for you. Yeah, d- donuts. Okay, maybe that's it. Donuts. Yeah, donuts right. are my cheat meal. There you go. 
Right. Mm. We're, we've gone way too long with yeah, this. Yeah, okay, but... sorry. We still have questions left, too, so we will be revisiting this in yeah. the future. We'll, uh, we'll probably do some more of these in the future, probably yeah. not next week, but no. we'll, we'll get back to it at some point. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you for tuning in this week. If you have any questions for us in the future that you'd like us to cover, you can reach out to me at hypertrophit.com, and you can find Alexa at therudardy.com. We will see you guys next week. We'll see you guys next week.